And right now we are two minutes away from the end of the trading day. Romain Bostic alongside Alex Steele. We're and help take us through the closing bell. It's a global simulcast, Alex. I'm it is. It here. is. It's Joined hard. right now by Scarlett Fu in our TV studio. <laughs> Carol Master and you Jim Sennett. You know, they, I just read what's in the prompter, Carol. They change it up on me. I don't know. I'm lost. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just like a robot. I'm I just Romain go Bostic. Yeah. Puppies. Well, we're puppies. We're puppies. <laughs> we're puppies. <laughs> Chase our tails. That's right. There. All right. Let's get to the markets here. Record high on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ also up four tenths of a percent. Bond yields down. Once again, Carol Masser. Yeah, don't you feel like that's a big story? I yeah. mean, whoa, uh, another, you know, softer inflation print. And you've got, what, a 10-year note now at 423. I mean, whoa, uh, you know, whether or not we get some data points next week or in a couple of days or in two weeks, whether that changes where the yields are, I would say yes, because we've seen a lot of volatility in this trade. Given CPI, what we saw with CPI yesterday, PPI today, I'm starting to feel like, and jobless claims today, too, I'm starting to feel like that Friday number that we got uh, for payrolls, was kind of the, the outlier here, Scarlett. It seems like everything's moving in the direction that the Fed wants to see it move in, except for that one number that we got last Friday. Yeah, and we keep hearing how the um, jobs numbers may be not corrupted, but may be affected by the whole migration situation as well. I feel like if we get some data tomorrow. We get import prices. We get Michigan consumer confidence. But mm -hmm. it's going to be a bit of a snoozer because the Euro Cup begins tomorrow afternoon. And you know that the trading <laughs> force will all be tuning in You're in right. the final hour of trading. Womp womp. Totally just phased right out there. Um, uh, Bank of America, though, uh, guys, talking about the pain trade. Second half, cyclicals. That's going to be what we're in for. All right, well, we get the closing bells uh, here in New York. You're looking at an S&P 500 up about 12 points here on the day, a two-tenths of a percent gain. That doesn't mean much. In fact, it actually does. That is a record <laughs> high, a modest one to be sure, but I think a lot of folks will take it as we now enter into new territory and new heights for the benchmark index. The Nasdaq Composite also at a, a record high today, a 59-point gain, up about four-tenths of a percent. Meanwhile, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is going to close out in the red, down two-tenths of a percent, and the Russell lower on the day by almost a full percentage point. I got to say, Romain, I think it's safe to say that the S&P 500 limping to another record, because if you look at the internals within the index, you've got most names lower, about 314 to the downside, 185 gaining ground, Scarlet, on this day, four unchanged. Record high is record high. doesn't matter if you limp there or you <laughs> march there. Um, you take a look at the best performing sectors. Um, there's actually only four out of 11 sectors in the green. Uh, tech is up 1.4%, so that is a decided rally there. REITs up half of 1%. Utilities barely high by a quarter of 1%. In terms of decliners, energy and communication services each losing about 1%, and industrials also trailing behind, losing two-thirds of 1%. All right, guys, to the individual gainers we go. Broadcom is certainly atop that list, finishing off the high of 16%. That's where it was at its best point uh, of the day, or its highest point, I should say, finishing, though, with a more than 12% gain. Number one gainer in the NASDAQ 100, number two gainer in the S&P 500 at that record close. Um, this is after the company, you know, the story delivered strong results and upbeat forecast lifted by robust demand for AI products. B of A saying Broadcom has a pathway to, quote, join the Trillionaires Club as it reiterated a buy rating, raised its price target to 2000 from $1,680. The stock closing at $1,670, $1 almost $1,679 a share. All right, to Tesla we go. That stock way off its highs of the day, was up almost 8% at its highs, finishing the day with about a 3% gain uh, among the top gainers in both the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. This after, of course, we know Elon posting on X that the two key proposals to re-ratify his pay package and move the EV makers legal hub to Texas from Delaware are passing by wide margins. 430 is when we actually get some of this vote. So we'll, we'll wait for that confirmation. So, But nonetheless, investors bullish on Tesla today. And NVIDIA also continuing to move ahead, up about 3.5%. Again, a top gainer in those major indexes, rallying to a record. This is where we had, of course, the 10 for 1 stock split uh, this week taking effect. Stock is up about 35% since announcing that split back on May 22nd. Uh, we did have uh, the company, I believe, coming out and talking about kind of some of the outlook, but nonetheless, investors upbeat once again on that one. Hey, Tim, before you go on yeah. negative on me here, uh, yeah. Apple, did you see this? Overtaking Microsoft as world's most valuable company. It's neck that and neck. That happened out of the blue. It's yeah. neck and neck. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Did, it did that right intraday, right, earlier this week. Yeah. But closing, I guess, right? Yep. Yeah, now we're on a closing basis. Okay, can I be a downer? You'd be a downer. Okay. 
Uh, media stocks uh, in the S&P 500, at least, uh, got beaten up today. The worst performer, Paramount. But the one I want to talk about that was down 6.66%, WBD, Warner Brothers Discovery. Shares actually closed at a record low. There was a little bit of news earlier today. The company did sell its stake in Formula E. That's the electric version of Formula One. Um, to Liberty Global, it's going to boost its share uh, of ownership to 65%. Shares of Warner Brothers Discovery, Warner Brothers Discovery down more than 35% so far this year. Another one of the worst performers on a percentage basis in the S&P 500 today, Generac Holdings, the maker of generators, uh, down 4.6%. Uh, this after Janie Montgomery Scott's uh, Sean Milligan cut the recommendation to neutral from buy. He wrote that uh, upside hinges on energy technology visibility. And finally, uh, Tyson Foods falling today by 1.6%. The company came out uh, earlier in the day and said that the company's CFO, John R. Tyson, was suspended from his role after an arrest for allegedly driving while intoxicated. You might recall that he was arrested after a woman found him asleep in her home in north uh, northwestern Arkansas after he was charged with public in and after that he was charged with public intoxication and criminal trespassing. Uh, Tyson Foods, it's the top U.S. meat company by sales. It named Kurt Calloway as its interim CFO. John R. Tyson, for his part, is the uh, great grandson of the uh, company's founder. All right, those are some good ones. Um, let's go to the bond market, because Carol, as you said, that's really where a lot of the action is, and very much true. And a couple things going on. On the flip side, you had a decline in European equities and a lot of questions about what the legislative makeup will look like in France. So you have challenges from the left and the right. So you have a move into safe haven assets, yields lower. Then you got a really solid 30-year auction, and the yield actually came in lower than that. And the combination you can see there, uh, the 10-year yield down by about seven basis points, Carol. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so really interesting. Hey, we want to go to um, a story that you want to talk internships. Yeah, like can we talk internships? Because girls, <laughs> you looking for an internship? Because I got some Maybe. bad news. I got some bad news. If you're looking for an internship, <laughs> apparently ca companies are hiring fewer interns uh, this summer, and you know we know this is a really important entry point for individuals when they're looking for their job coming out of college. But Handshake, which is a job search platform for college students, apparently yeah. tracking some of this and seeing the numbers. We've got some earnings though. Yeah, Adobe earnings crossing right now. Just one up here on the Bloomberg terminal. Uh, it looks like the company sees a fiscal year adjusted earnings per share coming in above the forecast. $18 to $18.20. Uh, Adobe second quarter revenue coming in above estimates at $5.31 billion, beating estimates of $5.29 billion. The company also saying that it sees third quarter adjusted EPS coming in above uh, the expectations at $450 to $455. Shares in the after hours right now, they are moving higher, Scarlett, by, uh, up by 10%. Yeah, but even as we go through all that, uh, when it comes to the third quarter revenue forecast, that is revenue for this quarter, uh, it sees $5.33 billion to $5.38 billion. That that trails the average analyst estimate of $5.4 billion. So on the top line, it's going to come in a little, a little bit lighter, even as the EPS will exceed the consensus estimate. Yeah, they, in the press release, they uh, talk about AI quite a bit here and what they're calling their highly differentiated approach to AI. This is something I think a lot of people want to get a better explanation about when we get to that conference call here in AI strategy, still nascent whether that actually showed up in the numbers or not. I'd like to see that broken out. But you know, I just want to point out here the digital uh, media revenue and this houses its AI tool Firefly. Uh, its net new annual recurring revenue uh, did wind up beating estimates for the quarter. It came at about 460 million. It, the estimate was for 433.2 hmm. million. And that's the area that everyone seems to really care about. Uh, yeah, so there you go, 460 million. And for the full year, they see 1.95 billion. That's also higher uh, than estimated for that digital media media net new annualized recurring revenue stream. All right, so key metric there. I mean, the stock has definitely lagged some of its um, other tech peers, if you will, down about 23% so far in uh, 2024. You do see that move in the uh, after hours up about 11%. Again, the key headline that we're focusing on here at Bloomberg is the outlook. Uh, fiscal year revenue, again, 21.4 billion to 21.5. Analysts had seen it from 21.3 to 21.5. I feel like we're splitting hairs mm. uh, with this uh, outlook, but nonetheless, investors moving in to it. Yeah, and of course there was some concern that there was softness among uh, customers for its products, for its software. And when we talk about customers, sometimes I feel like we need to differentiate here between enterprise customers and their budgets yeah. versus oh, consumers, call. because a lot of consumers are the ones who are using Photoshop and all these other creative I, products. I am curious, uh, and this is just a reminder that I probably need to cancel my subscription because I haven't used my my my, my, uh, my, 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 my personal <laughs> my personal one at home. I don't think I've used that in quite a while, but I guess is you know how they get you. But it gets to the question here: Do you think 
the addition of these AI tools, whether it's on the consumer side or to Scarlett's point to the yeah. enterprise side, that's going to be enough to entice people to spend more. It, it sort of depends on whether or not people can get the tools that they need for free from mm. competing services right now. I mean, you have a lot of services working on this stuff. Some of the big upstarts that have these LLMs that are able to generate images, um, that could be an issue. And that's uh, something that analysts are concerned about. All right. Well, nonetheless, investors liking it. Still the stock up almost 12 percent here uh, in the aftermarket. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Our cross-platform radio, TV, YouTube, Bloomberg Originals. We will see you once again tomorrow for the closing bell.